Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. Recently we've been discussing earthly riches, and concluded that it's not necessarily immoral to be rich, but that wealth and comfort can distract people from their obligation to do what's right. Today, can the rich be great saints? Now, of course, there are many people like St. Francis of Assisi who became great saints after giving up their riches, but we're not talking about those today, but about people who were still rich when they made the choices that led to their sainthood. Today, we'll only be talking about two of these, but of course, there are others. Sir Thomas More was an English lawyer, author, philosopher, and counselor to King Henry VIII, as well as the Lord High Chancellor of England for over two years. He was a man of great wealth and power who opposed Protestantism in England, a position in which he had the complete support of the king for quite some time. Unfortunately, kings can be fickle when it comes to getting what they want, and in King Henry's case, he wanted a son. His wife wasn't providing him with one, so he wanted to divorce her and marry someone else. But divorce wasn't possible for Catholics. Yeah, that King Henry VIII. When King Henry demanded that the bishops of England declare him the head of the church in England, only one of them opposed him, and suddenly the unpopular position was to be faithful to the Catholic Church. That bishop was executed for his refusal to betray the church, and so was Thomas More, who refused to attend the coronation of the new queen, and shortly afterwards was called to answer for trumped-up charges of treason multiple times before his continual refusal to sign oaths associated with the king's alleged remarriage and the supremacy of the king over the church finally ended in one of the treason charges sticking. Thomas More was executed for his refusal to betray his Catholic faith, and has since been canonized by the Catholic Church. King Louis the Ninth of France was a very rich and powerful man. Like all powerful people, he had struggles to hold on to his power against many rivals. He significantly reformed the French legal system, helped to care for the poor, built hospitals, preserved holy relics, and punished serious evils like prostitution, usury, and blasphemy. His actions were strongly motivated by zeal for Christ, and he helped to advance the church and the faith in every area of society that he touched. For this reason, he was canonized a saint. One thing you may notice is that while both of these men were rich, neither had riches as their primary motive. In fact, their riches were almost irrelevant to the types of actions they took, or, at best, were seen by them as another means to advance towards holiness. They were both rich, but neither was ruled by their riches. Money can be powerful. In fact, it can be so powerful that some people get the impression that the only way to become more powerful is with more money. However, that kind of power ends at the grave, and no matter how rich you are, you could still be hit by a bus tomorrow. None of us can prevent death entirely, nor can we prolong our lives if our time has really come. As long as that's the case, the only investment that really matters is in the banks of heaven. These rich saints were people who understood that simple truth, and showed us that we can indeed have money and use it for God, instead of trying to make ourselves gods in this life. The rich can be holy, they can be good, and they can be saints. It's not common, but it can happen. Next, can people in heaven have preferences? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.